What's good sports gamers? And it's that time again where new 2K gamers are starting to pop up with the holidays and stuff coming up. So with that in mind, I'm going to be going over with you some things you need to know to help get your gameplay off on the right foot in NBA 2K24. So alright, let's get it. First off, when it comes to finishing in the paint, it can seem like an adventure sometimes. Not having a plan and just hope you dunk on the whole team, I get it. But introduced last year was a move that completely takes the worry away, and it's the quick scoop layup. This move makes it nearly automatic for the ball handler once they get penetration into the lane to score, and all you have to do is hold the right stick directly to the left or right to perform it. Remember though, whichever direction you aim the stick will be the hand you will lay it up with. So you can be going left and lay it up with your right, or going right and lay it up with your left. It's such a fun move to pull off just because of how fast you're able to execute it. In NBA 2K24, by default, if you want to be able to make layups consistently, you're gonna have to deal with a shot meter that you must time to successfully make the shot. With the goal being landing inside your chosen color of choice in whatever shot meter you selected. Whatever shooting meter you select to shoot jump shots with will be the same for layups. If you have your shot meter set to shots and layups and your layup meter on. Now if you find it too hard to time layups and want the game to worry about that, just switch your shot timing to just shots. So when you go for a layup, the game will judge your make percentage by how open you are, the skill and badges of the nearest defender, and the skill of the player you're using. Now the pick and roll is probably going to be the most used by you. And to call for a pick and roll, there are two ways. You can either hold L1 or LB on your controller and you will call over whoever is the closest to the ball handler between your power forward and center. If your ball handler is at the power forward position like Kevin Durant or LeBron usually are, the game will move one slot down and now call over whoever is the closest between your center and small forward. And if you call it coming up the court, it's usually probably going to be whoever inbounds you the ball. You can also select who you want to set a screen for you by tapping L1 or LB on your controller and then holding the icon above their head to bring them over. So you can get some unusual pick and roll combos doing it this way. Now when you call over somebody to set a screen, you have a few things you can still do. While they're coming over, you can force the screen man to roll to the rim early before contact, which is called a slip screen by tapping L1 or LB. This is used when your opponent likes to control the hedge defender and jump out to cut you off when you go around the screen. Now the next two involve this thing above their head. You can also tell the screen guy whether to roll to the rim, which it will be set to by default, or to fade to the three point line, which you do by continuing to hold LB or L1, don't let go, and then tap R1 or RB to change their assignment. This is obviously great for guys who can shoot, and you may find it easier to get open shots this way as it isn't as common as a screen guy rolling to the rim for the defense. And you can switch the side you set the screen on all the way up until the defender makes contact with them. To know which side your guy is going to set the screen towards, look for whichever side the up and down line is on. If it's on the right of the sideways line, they're going to screen on the ball handler's right. And if it's on the left, they're coming to your left. It's annoying, you know, when you see the screen coming over and he lines up on the opposite side of where you thought he was. Next up, I'll just let it be known the mid-range is back and floaters need to be heavily utilized in your game. Honestly, there's so many this year you need to have it. It's a perfect counter for when you beat your defender, but the defense still has somebody parked under the rim, so there's a little gap in between. All you have to do is hold the right stick down to attempt one and watch it go right over the defender's arm. There are different type of block attempts at your disposal in NBA 2K24. If you hold the right trigger while going for the block with triangle or Y, you will attempt an aggressive block attempt, which lets you make highlight reel plays on shots you had no business getting to, but also be called for fouls more. So you want to reserve these when you have no other choice. And just holding Y or triangle, you will attempt a regular block, which you're less likely to be called for a foul doing. When players miss shots, you should always be looking to put it right back up while you're in the air instead of bringing the ball down by hitting square or X on your controller. 
And this year, 2K made it so you're able to put back up almost any offensive rebound that's close to the rim, even when you have no business trying it. So you're gonna wanna take advantage of that as well in instead of the putback animation your player will begin to do that you can see. But it's almost any possible miss now so you don't have to look for that. Just make sure the player is open to do so or your chance of making it does go down because they will have to put up a crazier putback attempt. Sometimes you just have to know when to fold them in 2K. So do not get baited into still trying a shot near the rim after the defender has recovered and clearly has stopped your drive or post up. At most you want to give it a good one or two pump fakes and if they don't jump, kick it back out. There's a good chance you're going to miss it. Don't fall for the trap. Now when you have the advantage towards the rim on your defender, whether from a drive or an effective post move, if the defender is still within striking distance, you may want to take advantage of their aggressiveness in that situation because they're going to try and block your shot here and avoid a possible contested miss by waiting an extra half second before you put up a shot instead of going as fast as you can because they're expecting you to as well. Now there are levels to this. You don't want to pump fake just to do it. We're going to go off of what the defender does and if he basically jumps. Don't get caught pump faking and going up immediately after that when the dude didn't even leave the ground. Now the most important part you need to get squared away is your shooting ability. Now something else that was introduced last year and improved upon was selecting your jump shots optimal time to release the ball, which is now called your shot timing visual cue. Which basically boils down to you can select during your player's jump shot the optimal time to release the ball and green the shot. Each selection is basically the speed you want to release it, with jump meaning to want to release your shoot button very early, and release being very late if you played last year. Then on top of that, you can pair it with finding your shooting meter, which you have a bunch of different options and locations to choose from, or you have the option to turn it off altogether. Get into practice mode and find out what you're most comfortable with. During a defensive possession, there will be times where you end up in a bad matchup like your point guard is now guarding the biggest dude on the floor. To help avoid total disaster when it happens, you can switch with your closest defender by holding X or A on your controller so they can take that matchup for you. Now let's talk about the cut to the basket button, which gets abused online because the defenders literally play it stupid but I wanna go over some uses of it that you can capitalize off of. And it's against off ball user defenders. So this is a great mechanic to beat guys playing off ball who try to jump your pass and get out of position doing so. Most commonly when they're 100% sure you're gonna pass to somebody and go for the pick six. You first have to notice this is a possibility by seeing if they're controlling the defender of your target. And if they end up compromising their position, just aim the left stick at your target and hold the Y or triangle button to make them cut to the hoop. New this year, by double tapping the right trigger on your controller, you're able to gain a burst of speed by throwing the ball ahead of you on a fast break. One quick and easy way to tweak your defensive strategy in NBA 2K24 is messing with the preset defensive setups. By going into your game plan and then defensive settings and then team focus and flicking your right stick to the left or right gives you specific focuses you want your defense to play. No threes, which gives you extreme pressure on a perimeter to avoid three-point attempts. Shrink the floor, which causes off-ball defenders to play loose to stop drives better. Stay home so your help defenders aren't leaving guys open consistently around the perimeter. And switch so on pick and rolls and off-ball screens, the defender will just switch assignments to not leave somebody open for even a brief second. Now one thing you must stop doing immediately if you're guilty is going for on-ball steals immediately after a guy gets the rebound out of frustration. The odds aren't in your favor and if you get called for a foul, your opponent is just going to go to the free throw line. You're better off playing the passing lanes. If you want to get extra disrespectful if you're beating somebody online, you're able to hang on the rim from any two-handed dunk by continuing to hold the right trigger button while dunking. You're also able to swing yourself side to side and pull yourself up with the left stick, moving it in any direction. 
Next, I want to talk about Icon Lead Passing. And I use it about 95% of my passes. It's such an amazing thing because you can literally create offense out of nothing just by forcing your computer player to move in a different direction on a dime. And to do it, you hit RB or R1 to bring up your target and then move the left stick in the direction you want to tell them to go and then hit their icon. You can basically become Pat Mahomes using this on some passes. It's cool. Now to throw an alley-oop, you first want to make sure your target has a clear lane towards the hoop or else you will throw an easy turnover. To figure that out, just draw an imaginary line from your romance to the hoop in your head. If it's blocked by a defender, it's a no-go. Once that's settled and they have a clear look, you double tap triangle or Y on your controller, where a meter will then pop up that you will have to stop inside the green window. The more open your target is, the harder it will be to miss the green window, so no worries here. One of the easiest separators between players is taking jacked up shots that are heavily contested consistently. Preparing for a catch and shoot opportunity, it's easy to get locked in and be like, oh, I'm open about the nail the shot but you have to be aware of the closest defender to you as well. And if they're in striking distance to contest your shot by getting a hand up or jumping. Just being aware of this can help you go, okay, maybe I shouldn't shoot this ball right here. And can end up with an even more open shot with no threat of a contest by a defender now. To help improve your awareness to do this, simply scan the defense after you have committed to passing the ball. One easy dribble move to quickly change directions and get away from defenders pressuring you is the behind the back dribble, which you can pull off by aiming the right stick down and to the left or right of your off ball hand. If you want to start cooking up immaculate plays for your players, if you're on current gen, you can access it by hitting LB or L1 on your controller to bring up their icons and then clicking the player's icon that you want to run a play for. If you're on last gen consoles, you can access it again by hitting LB or L1 in your controller and then hit R1 or RB for positional play calling. And then like on current gen, hitting the player's icon you want to call a play for. On both consoles, the first page is the basic actions you can run for that player. And if you hit the right trigger, you will access the plays for that player in their playbook. The better the player, the more pages you will have to access. There's also a dedicated mode with no stakes that lets you practice each team's plays in 2KU to see which ones you like. And lastly, if you have found some nice plays you would like to run in your mode of choice, you can set them up so you can quickly access them while coming up the court, which is definitely beneficial for plays that are buried deep in the playbook. And to do so with your favorite plays by default, well, you'll have eight slots and they will be default basic actions like isolation. But going into your game plan, offensive settings, play selection, here by hitting X or A, you're able to change your favorite plays. So changing them here, I can quickly get to them while on the court, which for current gen is hitting left on the D-pad and then using the left and right triggers. Now on last gen consoles, hit LB or L1 on your controller. An additional tip is regardless of who the player is originally designed for, you can assign plays to anybody basically by highlighting the play and then hitting triangle or Y and then assign it to that player. So again, this will override whoever the player is originally designed for in favor of your selection. So all right, sports gamers, do you have anything else that wasn't mentioned that you think should be? Leave it in the comments down below. And stay tuned here at Sports Gamers Online for more NBA 2K24 content. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And once you're with us, hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching. And be good, y'all.